300 people wanted help, 100 really wanted some help, and only three get to hear what I'm really saying behind the scenes. I was like, everyone needs to hear this stuff. So I was like, man, if I just open up my entire mind to the entire world for free and let everybody in, then I can create a big enough brand to where I can at that point go build other businesses on top of that brand, as opposed to trying to build the business on a coaching program I could actually open up to the entire world and then build even bigger businesses than the coaching program long term. Hi, I'm Tim with the Shab Real Estate team, and we are on Behind the Sign with an amazing guest, someone I followed since about 2019, blew my socks off, Ricky Carruth. Tell me a little bit about yourself. What's up, bro? Good to be here. Uh, yeah, no, man, I've been, uh, I'm 41, be 42 this year in 2023. 2023 is going to be one amazing year, by the way. Um, but yeah, yeah, man, I'm just down here on the Alabama Gulf Coast, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, right on the Florida line. Been selling real estate since 2002, and uh, it's been a roller coaster, <laughs> honestly, but it's been fun. Um, it's a wild and crazy career, but um, it's one I think uh, anybody can succeed at, and I think everyone, you know, honestly should should do real estate, <laughs> you know. Yeah, if yeah. I had my way, everybody would yeah. be a real estate agent. And then everybody says, well, then who's going to buy all this real estate? Who's going to, who's yeah, going to use a real a estate brave, agent? That's a brave statement, man. Everybody <laughs> should be a realtor, right? Everybody that's should great. be a real estate agent. Absolutely, man. And then they where, are we, gonna, it, right? where are we going to get the business from? That's what somebody asked me one time. I said, well, listen, I get a lot of business from agents. <laughs> a lot of business. <laughs> you know, when you got to go, when you buy something in a different area, um, like when I buy in different areas, I use a real estate agent. I'm a real estate agent, yep. right? Um, because you don't know the local market, you know, the, the, the yeah. markets are so different from market to market and different paperwork, different, um, you know, fees, different, um, you know, things with the counties and the cities and the states. It's, it's, um, that's what I say, man, it's, it's such a wild and crazy, uh, crazy deal. So, so if me as an agent needs an agent, when I go places, how do you think normal people feel that aren't real estate agents, even when they're in their local right. market, right? Yeah, yeah I, I definitely agree with you 100%. Even like on the commercial side of stuff, I don't do commercial real estate, so I'm not going to try and act like I do. I refer it because, and if I were to go get something, I would use a commercial realtor because they know what they're talking about, right? Like yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. So Ricky, I, yeah. I started following you. I think we went back and forth in 2019 and I'll, you know, I'll be honest with you, man. I was like, this guy is full of crap. How can he possibly do all of that? Mm. And I, I've been watching your videos lately and I know you take a lot of heat there because the amount of stuff that you put out there, the number of videos, and I can say that you absolutely do because you haven't stopped. Like it, it just continues year after year. You put out probably more videos than any real estate agent. Um, and I know you do the real estate coaching too, but just the amount of stuff you put out, is amazing. How do you keep up with that? Yeah, I mean, from the social media uh, side of things, it's uh, it's always a work in progress, you know. Um, people look at, they take a snapshot of what I do day to day now, and they think, man, there's, you know, how in the world, there's no way I could do that, this, that, and the other. But what they don't get is, is I've been doing this for 20 years, you know. I focused on real estate sales for 15 years, totally 100% focused, didn't do anything else whatsoever. Um, dabbled in some real estate investing, but I didn't do stocks, I didn't do social media, nothing just focused on phone calls, emails, and postcards to get my business to where I was making a million dollars a year. Then once I made a million dollars a year, then I said, okay, let's, let's dabble into other things. I conquered that. And then I started um, writing books. I started writing and speaking and making videos and coaching and stuff like that. But it's, it's been like a, you have to layer it, right? Um, you know, I did Facebook first, you know, I worked on it and really tried to understand it for like, three or four months before I even touched another platform. Then I went to Instagram and, yep. and, and, and added that to the, the layer of it, Facebook, right? And worked on it for three or four months. Then I added YouTube, started working on it. Then I did, you know, different platforms and added podcasts and did all that. So it's, it's been a, like a, a layered stair-stepping process. And along the way, you kind of start to learn what works and what doesn't work, how to be more efficient, how to produce content at scale, um, and everything like that. So net bringing that all to present day, um, like for, um, my vertical, um, format, you know, videos for, you know, uh, reels yep. and TikTok and YouTube shorts yep. and stuff like that. You know, I'll sit down and actually I'll sit down for like an hour and come up with all the ideas for like 20 videos. 
Um, you know, these videos are one minute long or so, give or take. And I'll come up with like 20 ideas and I'll literally film all of them in one setting, you know, back to back to back. Um, yep. So I just batch them up like that. And then I have an editorial team that takes them and makes them look amazing. And then boom, you know. So I, honestly, I'm right now I'm up to posting five times a day on Instagram. Um, I'll mix a Twitter post in there, a quote or an image. Um, you know, I'm starting to do the article in the background, giving reactions to headlines yep. and stuff, yep, which is I like that. which is really cool, and uh, that's brought a lot of views to my to and a lot of followers to my uh, profile. But honestly, tomorrow it'll be something else. Like I'll I'll see something or hear yep. something or, or 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 realize or research about something that changes my strategy up a little bit and you're just constantly getting a little better a little better a little better but you hit it on the head man that it's just consistency 2019 did you have an editorial staff at that time i was editing everything or did you do the editing that time? that's yeah, what i, I thought was, man that's why i was like there's no way because i know this guy is probably doing his own stuff yeah he's making you know this many calls you, you know what's so cool like, about it was that when i got to where i was making a mill a year um that was when i quit prospecting and i was just living off past clients and referrals Yep. And when you live off your database, you maintain your level of income. So when I worked so hard to get to the mill, then I could actually turn off the prospecting, you know, time and focus more on content creation and building other businesses, but still maintain that mill in a year. Really, I was working like maybe five to 10 at the most hours a week on my real estate business. Um, um, you know, while I was maintaining that hundred deals a year, because it's only two deals yeah. a week. Right, it's two deals a week, and um, it was I was just taking orders. It wasn't like I was having to, you know, work really hard or prospect for these deals. It was just people coming to me saying, "I want to do this, I want to do that," and yeah. then my assistant was really handling everything on the back end. So I was just handling mm -hmm. the, the first phone call, maybe a negotiation here or there, a repair addendum, maybe go to a closing or two. I wasn't spending a whole lot of time, but the thing is, is I spent 15 years to build that machine. And that's yeah. what people just, they just can't, you know, they're like, oh, there's no way he's doing all this and all that. Well, I spent 15 years to build that machine to the point where I could afford to to play it like that. You know what I mean? So the other day, and I didn't realize this back then, but the other day I heard you saying how, you know, you went broke, you worked in the oil fields, you did all this stuff. And I've been in the business since 04. Uh, you're probably 02, 03, right? Somewhere back there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So our career path is extremely similar. And I think the way we approached our business was very similar too. And like, when I heard you say that you went broke, you worked multiple jobs, that's the kind of thing that those people don't realize. The mm -hmm. people who think, well, you know, how does this work? How does this happen? And they're two years in the business. They don't understand the, the grind. They don't understand that you know, we've been through the lows and we know that the minute you take your foot off the gas, you come to a stop. And, you know, my wife has mentioned to me, like, when is, when is enough enough? You know, when is enough enough? I'm like, it never yeah. is enough because yeah. I'm scared to death to take my foot off the gas. Cause if I yeah. do that, this animal is going to come to a screeching halt. And I'm scared to death of that because I've been through it and it's horrible. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the same thing sometimes when's enough enough because I don't honestly I don't have to work anymore, but I still get up like I'm broke every day. Um, I don't know. I grew up roofing houses and, um, you know, I, I don't care what's happening like in my financial situation or the markets or whatever. Um, you know, my lifestyle is I get up and work as hard as I can every day, um, you know, no matter what's happening. It's not really about money. It's not really about markets or whatever. It's just about working. I don't know, man. Uh, I just that. I just love to work. It's honestly, it's almost like a hobby. Um, yep. You know, there, there's a part just, of there's a part of it where I just really enjoy it to the point where it's almost, you know, it's not a hobby <laughs> because I do it every day all day long. But yeah. and there's definitely a sense of enjoyment behind it. But you're right. Um, you know, once you let that, that foot off the gas, listen, you know, people talk about going from part-time to full-time, what's going to change in your life. You wake up now to go to your full-time job, you know, you wake up and you work your ass off all day, right? When you, when you yeah. go real estate full-time, it's going to be even worse. You're going to wake up and work yeah. your ass off all day and night, you know, yeah. um, yeah. your lifestyle doesn't really good. change that yeah. much.
I think my enough yeah. eno is enough is at five o'clock every day, right? Like that's where I cut it off. Like, could I work past five and double my production and produce more content and do more things and all this stuff? And yes, I could. Um, that opportunity sitting there, but enough is enough. Five o'clock. Yeah. I'm gonna clock out. I'm gonna, you know, do what I also enjoy you still doing. Still making yourself available though. Are you still available to your current clients at, after five? It just depends on what the situation is. Like if they want yeah. to see a house, if they want to, you know, list a property, um, if we're negotiating a deal, if I need to, if they want me to write an offer, yeah, I'll do any of that stuff. I'm not gonna yeah. answer repair addendums. I'm not gonna answer it. <laughs> yeah, I'm right, not right. gonna answer an email from a random buyer lead. I'm not gonna, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna do the tedious office work type stuff. But yeah, if there's a situation, sure, right. But that's that's the thing. A lot of people talk about that and come to find out those situations are not very common. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, they do happen here and there, and there are markets where most buyers are looking after five o'clock because they work all day. I get mm -hmm. all that. Um, but if that's your life, um, you know, I've always said, I'm going to work from eight to five. And after five, if you want to see property, I'm there, right? Or on the weekends. I never worked in the office on the weekends and stuff. Um, right. I always went to appointments on the weekends, um, but I never like did the the day-to-day -day admin, research and development, stuff like that. Postcards, letters, emails, yeah. marketing. So when was it you hired somebody? To your admin, your back end. So when I was, it was probably 2012-ish or so. I got back in in 2008. And then, um, mm -hmm. you know, I was just single agent till about 2000. I want to say it was 2011 or 12 or so. And I had 30 active listings. And that was kind of the breaking point for me. Because I was getting yeah. so many requests to see my listings. Um that I couldn't hand like me handling the request to see my listings because I'm in a vacation market. So like when they request, then I have to call the rental company to see if the current renters that are there for a week will let us so, see, yeah. then yeah. call, then wait on them to call the renters, mm -hmm. then have them call me back. Then I call the agent and all that's done digitally now, of course, but it's still a process. I still have to email, right. wait on response, yep. see if the renters are okay with it, get the code. Like it's a process. And so, I was spending all my time handling requests. So that was the first task I had to take off my shoulders to give myself enough room to breathe so I could go out and you know prospect more and sell more real estate. Um, so once I brought my admin on to take that one task off my shoulders to where I could open up to continue expanding my business, then I just taught her everything else, you know, how to put stuff in MLS, how to do postcards, how to do all the other things that you know I needed her to do. So. Yeah, I think that's the thing is you get to the bottleneck in your business and you realize what those one or two activities are that are really holding you back from growth. And those are the two activities you hire someone for. And then once you get them on board and train them on those two things and you can, you got some room to breathe, then you kind of show them all the other stuff to really take everything off your plate. There was definitely a time in my life where I wanted to sell real estate till I died. I just loved it that much. And I yeah. think a lot of agents sit there and th and I've heard a lot of agents say that. And I tell them, I'm like, that's what you're saying now. You right, know? Just <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're the gonna get to is... a point. Yeah, you're gonna get to a point where the grind is gonna be too much for you. And you're mm -hmm. you're gonna have you're gonna want you're gonna have wished you put something in place that could kind of supplement that where you could do it if you wanted to, but you don't have to. Um, and so, yeah. you know, real estate investing is a big, big, you know, vehicle, you know, that all yeah. agents need to be doing is investing into the product that you're selling, understanding the game of real estate investing and depreciation and um, all that stuff. And then, um, but, you know, I, I, you know, I did that, of course, but, you know, I saw a huge opportunity with social media that I didn't take advantage of in my real estate business, you know, and, yeah. and, you know, I, I kind of. I was in, a, I, you know, I was one of the first people on MySpace, and MySpace mm -hmm. went away really fast. You know, yeah, basically as soon as yeah. Facebook came along. Well, well, when Facebook came along, I was like, well, this is just another MySpace. It's going to go away quick. And so at that point, when what happened to MySpace, it kind of spoiled it. It ruined me for social media, and so I just didn't pay attention to any social media platform for like a decade because that was like in 2005, 2004, or five, right. or whatever. Yeah. 
And so literally for a decade, I completely ignored all social platforms. And by the time I could pick my head up for air from just keeping my head down and focused on sales, as soon as I could look around and breathe for a second and, and really started to try to understand what's going on, I realized, wow, these platforms are here to stay and this is an incredible opportunity. You know, I missed the boat building my real estate business there. However, I can still build a brand there and see what I can do right. to, you know, build other businesses later on. So, well, I was writing a book because I said, man, I've, I've hit 100 deals for three years in a row. Most people sell real estate for two years and sell 19 properties and now they coach and you know sell courses for 500 bucks. Yeah. So my story yeah. is I got in, I made a meal, I lost it, I came back, I became the top agent in Alabama and sold, prop sold 100 properties a year for three years and then decided I'm gonna try to share some of this with people. So yeah. I was writing a book in the middle of writing the book and Remax said, we want you to speak of this thing. And I was like, oh, I'll do that, you know. Um, oh yeah. Yep. So I go and do this first speech in Biloxi back in 2016. Um, and long story short, um, you know, it was a disaster really. I was kind of sick. I was in a suit. I was the last speaker. I was nervous as can be. Um, but I made such an impact on the people. People were standing in a line to talk to me afterwards. And I was like, wow, what I'm saying really resonates with people. I need to yep. finish the book. So that motivated me to finish the book. Well, then I started saying, okay, I'm gonna do a coaching program. So I was charging. I was charging 20 bucks a month, 150. I tried a thousand one-time fee. I tried all kinds of different things. And at the end of the day, to make a long story short, I realized agents just don't wanna pay anything for anything. You know, so yeah. I said, yeah. you know what? Uh, 300 people will sign up for a webinar, 100 will show up, and three will sign up. I was like, man, nobody here, the 300 people wanted help, 100 really wanted some help and only three get to hear what I'm really saying behind the scenes. I was like, everyone needs right. to hear this stuff. So I was like, man, if I just open up my entire mind to the entire world for free and let everybody in, then I can create a big enough brand to where I can at that point go build other businesses on top of that brand, as opposed to trying to build the business on a coaching program I could actually open up to the entire world and then build even bigger businesses than the coaching program long term. And so that's kind right. of been the play. And I, what really made me do it is I was just frustrated with trying to build, because I was making 10 G's a month automatic payments on 200 agents at the time. But I was like, this is just not where it's at. Um, and so I was already posting on all platforms and I was already like building brand and stuff, but the pay thing was a thorn because like I couldn't go on stage and tell people everything I wanted to tell them because then I'm telling people the secrets that other people are paying for. Right. Like the yep. whole thing was not me. It just, I couldn't, it didn't feel right. The whole thing. Yep. So Gary V, I ran into his content and um, it kind of hit me. I was like, I need to go free and just build my brand and then opportunities will happen. And so that's what's yeah. happened, dude. Now I've got that's celebrities awesome. following me and DMing me and yep. all kinds of big names and and stuff. And it's really cool. So I'm getting all kinds of opportunities of and you know, we're launching all kinds of different businesses right now. And it's very exciting, yeah. honestly. Yeah, I listen to that. I, I was a big Gary Vee guy back in 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I mean, it, it, the stuff he would say was always... I already had that in my mind at one point or another. So it always resonated with me. And, yeah. you know, honestly, I think back and that was, that's what drove me. You know, I've, I've always had the similar, like, I want to go, I want to go, I want to be the best at what I do. It's not about making the money. It's about making the biggest impact that I possibly can. And Gary V gave me that. Like if there's a time where I was driving to work and I just kind of felt like, blah, I have to listen to Gary V or, you know, somebody and next thing you know, I'm back on track, ready to get in there and I'm on fire, right? <laughs> I talk to Gary, you know, like we talk, but um, like uh, a lot of people think, oh, well, it would be great if I were like in really good with the Gar Grant Cardones, the Gary Vees, the Ed Milets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And what's cool about what I'm doing is I can visualize five, 10 years from now and I and I see all the future Gary Vees and the future Ed yep. Milets and Grant Cardones. Mm -hmm. And I'm literally yep. creating great relationships with these future influencers, uh, the next generation of these guys. And it's really cool to kind of take a second sometimes and look at what the future holds. 
um, for right. what I'm doing. It's really, it's a really cool thing, um, you know, to think about. But yeah, um, you know, there's some big time future influencers that we're like best friends, you know, we talk all the time. I've always wanted to get there and I've always, you know, I've got quite a few videos and I, I'm thinking to myself, I got 370, 380 videos on YouTube. And then I look at you and you're like 1.3 thousand videos. I'm like, sheesh, I got a ways to go to catch up to this guy. Now, what I've learned lately is that quantity, really, really quality quantity on Instagram is what's crushing it. Like what I'm doing, five posts yep. a day, trying to keep the quality as high as possible for five posts. Yep. On YouTube, it's more quality. Like you could do one video yeah. a month, and as long as it's a really incredible video that yeah. everybody loves, then you're gonna crush it. You know, you could do one video a month and crush it on YouTube as long as it's very well produced and high quality. Yeah. You know, so um, I'm learning. You know, now, now, now. With that being said, with YouTube, um, I film and edit all my YouTube still. Right. And that's why I'm putting out less content there right this second. I'm putting out more shorts than anything because I'm kind of spending time to create my long form content because I really want it yeah. to be good. And in 2023, I really want to ramp up YouTube and um, see some see some better growth than I have. Hey, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope it brought you tons of value. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I'm going to put the next video right here for you so you don't have to go anywhere. You can just click this video to keep that Ricky train rolling. Hey, we'll see you guys on this next video, and I'll talk to you soon.